Oh, today you have E equals MC squared, Donald, to teach you bacterial genetics. So, we are going to start by talking about Donna. Donna is one of the most important things of life. And it is so important that many important people have made songs about Donna. And here's one. Donna, na, 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 na. Oh, wait. No, that's, so, that is DNA. So, our first review is we have DNA as a double helix. Remember, that is two strands of DNA wound together like a ladder. We have nucleic acids that are going to be our rounds of the ladder. We have four types. Adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. So, who binds with who? The straight line letters bind with the straight line letters. So that's going to be A binds with T. And then we have the curvy line letters with the curvy line letters. So, G binds with T. Now, the three pieces which we have a phosphate, a sugar, and a nucleic acid are called a nucleotide, and these are the building blocks of DNA. The backbone of our DNA is going to be a sugar phosphate backbone. And remember, the two strands do not run in the same line. They are anti-parallel, going in the opposite direction of each other. Now, how are these two things actually connected? They are held together by hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds between those nucleic acids. Bacterial nucleons region is where the chromosome is housed or located. While not replicating, the bacterial chromosome supercoils in on itself. It uses histone, histone like binding proteins to compact the DNA further and further. Now remember, you've probably heard of histones before. Histones are only in eukaryotes. And they are also used to supercoil or condense. So, bacteria do not have histones, but they have histone-like proteins. And over here in our picture, we can see a, a relaxed, conventional circle DNA. Then we start to supercoil it, and we coil it in on each other, and then we coil it further. And then in this bottom picture, we see lots of coils with my knife, and we have our histone-like binding protein that hold them together. So, types of replication. Now, I bet the title gives it away. It's my conception. But we are going to look at all three types of replication. We're going to start with the middle conservative replication. So, the middle one means that the parent DNA is going to be conserved in its entirety. And the daughter DNA is going to be created just by looking at the parent DNA. Now, there's a problem there. It doesn't have a template, so it's just looking. And there are lots and lots of mistakes in conservative DNA because the daughter does not have a template or a morphle to go after. Next, we have dispersive DNA, which means bits and pieces of the parent cell are dispersed along the daughter. Here's a piece, and then the other side is the daughter, and here's another piece, and the other side is the daughter. Then same with this other one. That is very, very complicated. We don't like complications. We want things easy and simple. Which brings us to semi-conservative replication. Semi-conservative replication, we take one half of the parent strand and use it as a template, or use it as a model that we can follow to create the other half. So what does that mean we have? That means we have two daughter strands that have one part of the old parent, one new strand, and the other one has one part of the parent and one new strand. This is simple, easy. You have a template to follow. We like simple, we like easy. Then my conservative replication. Okay, things to remember and to consider for bacterial DNA replication. Most, not all, but most of the bacteria. Chromosomes 
of in a closed circle. This gives us spatial or topological problems. So topological means spatial. So problem here is where do we begin? Second problem is how do we copy a circle and not have them hit each other? We will find that out. Second thing to consider is the curious but logical nature of DNA molecules. They are double stranded. We must be able to get them apart. And they are going in opposite directions, anti parallel. That means there's going to be something somewhere in there. Next, the nature of DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase can only build on one way, so it can only extend. And it needs a template. It must start with something. It cannot start de novo. De novo is on its own. So it has to bind and add to something. It cannot just start on its own. That could be a problem later on. Finally, is termination. By the end, we have two new loops, but they are linked. They are inside each other. That is another spatial problem. How do we get them apart to make two new circles? Hmm, we shall find out. First thing is first. Overall the picture. We have our origin, which we are going to start. Then we have two replication ports. It's going to go in either direction. This saves time. As we find this in either direction, we keep continuing, we keep pulling it apart. Then we have them linked at the bottom. This is a problem, like I said. Then we have to figure out a way to split them into two new individual circular chromosomes. Origin of replica replication. Bacterial chromosomes have one origin of replication called OEC. As you pull it apart, the supercoiled DNA becomes more supercoiled further down. This is a problem. Too much supercoiling can destroy the DNA. We must do something about this. Ha ha! Fixing the supercoiling. We have topo isomerases. Fun word to say. And gyrases. Ooh. Yes. What these guys do is they can take away or introduce one or two terms. Hmm. Topo isomerase has two different types. Topo isomerase one and topo isomerase two. And then we have gyrase. Hmm. So topo isomerase one literally cuts one of the strands and allows it to uncoil. Uncoil one. Topo isomerase 2 can cut both strands and can release it and actually become a circle. So, we can also add in terms because after it is done replicating, it needs to go back into that condensed form. So, we are going to add terms to condense it. Nature of DNA and DNA polymerase. Reach back into your biology. Remember what DNA polymerase adds to new what? What does it add? It adds... Did you say that it adds new DNA? Good job. Good job. It adds new DNA from a 5 prime to a 3 prime end. There are many types of DNA polymerases, and they do different jobs during the replication. As you see, we have... DNA polymerase 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Moving on. So, initiation of the DNA replication at OREC. So, OREC has a specific look to it. It has multiple different pieces to it. It's got some AT sections, and it has some sections that have a specific sequence in it. And you know who finds it? DNA A. DNA A will find these sequences of OREC and bind to them and actually open up the single strand to make an initiation complex. So DNA A starts the initiation process. Next, section 2. DNA C guides helicase, also known as DNA B, to the initiation complex. So this is helicase and this is helicase. Helicase will move in opposite directions, opening up two replication ports. 
Two, two, I tell you. Again, two is eight times. But it leaves open single-stranded DNA. This is a problem. The single-stranded DNA wants to come back together. So we use FSB proteins to hold them apart and to protect the single-stranded DNA. Helicase not, not only opens the single-stranded DNA or double-stranded DNA in the single-stranded, it also is a loading site for DNA polymerase. Do you remember what DNA polymerase adds? DNA! Good job! I heard you say it. I did, I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, DNA T is going to be short for DNA polymerase. We are going to use elongation next. Elongation of DNA replication. So, it replicates bidirectionally. Remember, bi means two. So, in two different directions, this minimizes the replication time. The DNA polymerase catalyzes polymerization at 1,000 nucleotide per second in vitro, or in vivo, excuse me, in vivo. So, in vivo is in nature. So, what it does is it can lay down a 1,000 nucleotides per second. That is very quick. The DNA polymerase needs an RNA primer to elongate the DNA chain. Like I said, it cannot start from nothing. It must have something to add on to. So, who comes into play? Primase. Primase brings in a layer or a strip of RNA and places it down. And that RNA strip can be added on to. So, the DNA polymerase adds on to that RNA strip. How does the DNA polymerase catalyze? The synthesis of two antiparallel strands of DNA. Well, we have our leading strands, and then we have Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand. You should recall Okazaki fragments from your biology class. So, here we have our DNA replication form. We have our leading strand with our continuous strand, and then we have the Okazaki fragments. Again, we must move in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So, the primase has laid down a primer at the beginning, and then the DNA polymerase binds onto it and starts laying down new DNA until it hits an RNA primer. Then it will jump back to the new primer and lay down some more, and bump, it hits the primer again, so it jumps back, and it will lay down some more, and then jump back as it opens and lays down some more. So, what happens once it's laid down? Well, next we have exonucleases comes and removes the RNA primer. Now, this leaves holes, holes of nothingness, ligase. Ligase comes and seals in those empty spots and spaces with new DNA, complementary DNA. So, termination of replication. Two replication forks will meet approximately 180 degrees from the ORC, terminating the replication. E. coli has six termination sites called TER sites. What happens when it hits a TER site? Well, in the one way traveling is enclosed at a TER site by TUS, which is a termination utilization substance or protein, which binds to the term site and inhibits the helicase activity. So, we have TUS sitting here. And DNA helicase is coming down, coming down, and bumps it, and gets knocked off. Therefore, it cannot open anymore, and replication is terminated. Problem is, is that once we are done, we have two interlocking loops. Well, we get topoisomerase 4 to come in. Remember, topoisomerases can break both strands, and then they can be linked back together. So, summary. Double-stranded DNA in a circle. Or you see, two replication forks. Keep going around and around, and then they are split into two daughter cells. First, daughter chromosome. So, remember, this is semi-conservative replication, because we have half of this one is going to be parent, and half of this one is going to be parent. Well, I hope you have enjoyed B equals MC squared Donald. Teaching you today.
Have a good time.